Right. Guys, uh, we are still on our analytical uh, geometry, still working with our question papers. This is another exam question that we have. Question number three, uh, study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. All right, so this is your diagram, which is a triangle. It will be point A, three, nine, the point B, one, minus five, uh, the point C, which is minus five, three. So that is uh, it about the diagram. And as you can see, it's just clear. And the first part of our question, uh, 3.1, was to calculate the coordinates of the midpoint, all right, of the line segment AB. All right, so we have got uh, the line AB. We need to calculate its midpoint in that case. All right, so remember that the midpoint, all right, uh, that's 3.1. You can just even write the midpoint in this case will be equal to Remember that you add the X values. We are considering the line A, B, all right? The line segment A, B. So you have to add the X values for A and B. So that will be X1 plus X2 over two. Then you also do the same on the Y values. You add the Y values, you divide by what? You divide by two. So that means we are going to obtain the midpoint. So the X values, we've got three. Uh, the x value here, we've got a one, all right? Remember a point is given in terms of x and y there. So we've got x and we also have uh, y on this side, all right? So the x value here is three, the x value here is one. So you're gonna add three plus one over two. You do the same thing on the y values. This is nine, this is minus five, okay? So it's going to be nine plus minus five like this, all right? So you're just gonna put it this way, uh, divide by two. So that is going to be the midpoint of AB in that case, okay? So if you add three plus one, uh, which is four, four divided by two, which is going to be two, or you can just use your calculator in the simplification of anything that you want. So you just put a fraction, then add three plus one, uh, over two like this, all right? Three plus one over two, which is going to give us a two. You do the same thing on nine plus minus five, so it's nine plus, open the bracket for minus five like this, just put it in a bracket, then you divide by what? You divide by two, so this is going to give us a two. So that means uh, the midpoint, maybe it's somewhere there, which is at two, two, something like that, okay? Remember the midpoint, the one that divides our line into two equal parts. So we've got the same distance from B to the midpoint and so on and so on. All right, so that is how we could have uh, calculated our midpoint in that manner. Uh, then calculate the gradient of the line, all right, 3.21, the gradient of the line AC, all right, and the gradient of the line CP on that, all right, AC first, let's start with AC. So we need the gradient of the line I see in this case, all right, so we are considering uh, the point A and the point C in that case, all right? So remember that the gradient, that's 3.21, the gradient of a line is given by the change in Y over the change in X, that's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, or you can use Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus X2, which is one and the same thing. All right, so that's the Y value. You can say this is our first point, this is our second point. So we need the Y value. Remember X, Y, the concept does not change. So the Y value on the second point is three uh, minus the Y value on our first point, which is A here, which is nine over uh, the X value on our second point, X two, which is minus five, minus the X value on the first point, which is three. So this is going to give us uh, the gradient of the line I see, all right? So also on our calculator, we can simplify this by having a fraction, that's three minus nine. So three minus nine like this over minus five minus three, minus five like this, minus three, you subtract three. This is going to give us three over three over four. So this gradient is going to be three over four in our calculations. All right, let's see the other part. Uh, then also on 3.22, uh, the gradient of CB, the line CB, this one, we also need its gradient. All right, so that's 3.22. You're going to need the gradient of CB. All right, 3.22. 2. 
So the gradient of the line CB is still having the same formula. Remember, we say the change in Y over the change in X, that's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So that's it. Considering uh, the line CB in this manner, this is CB. So we're going to consider the Y values on our second point, which is minus 5. The Y value is minus 5. So that's minus 5 minus the y value here on our point, which is going to be three. So that's minus five minus three. The x value, x here on our second point is going to be one minus the x value here, which is minus five. So it's minus minus five like this. All right. So this is going to give us uh, the gradient in this case of the line of the line CB. All right. So on our calculator, uh, we're going to do a fraction that's minus. 5, then we subtract 3 from there, okay? Over uh, 1 minus minus 5. So you're just going to have a bracket for minus 5 like this, minus 5 in a bracket. So this is going to give us minus 4 over 3, all right? So we are obtaining the gradient of minus 4 over, over 3. Okay, let's see the other part of our question in this case, okay? Uh, after this, we are now asked, uh, okay, uh, this question 3.2. Show that AC is perpendicular to CB. All right, remember that for these two lines to be perpendicular, the product of the gradients should give us what? Should give us negative one. The product of the gradient of AC and the gradient of CB should give us negative one. That is for these two lines to be perpendicular, we must obtain what? A negative one, if they are perpendicular, okay? If they are parallel, they are the same, but if they are perpendicular, the product should give us negative one. We calculated the gradient of AC before, uh, so we can just consider that part that we calculated this gradient of AC, we have it. The gradient of AC here, we got three over four. This is the gradient of AC, which is three over four. So that's three over four multiply to the gradient of CB. We also calculated the gradient of CB here. This is the gradient of CB, which gave us negative four over three. So you're gonna multiply to negative four over three like this. All right, so if you multiply these two guys, you're going to get what? A negative one. So that is truly, these two lines, they are perpendicular, all right? Because the product is giving us a negative one. So therefore, it means these two lines are perpendicular. AC is perpendicular to what? To CB. Okay, 3.4, determine the length of the line segment AC and CB. All right, I want us to have this. I'm not just remove this part. Okay, we need... Remember, we just proved that these two lines are perpendicular. The line AC and CB, they are perpendicular. So maybe we're just going to have a 90 degrees here. All right. So this question is saying, we are supposed to determine the length of the line AC. All right. So let's determine the length of line AC. So remember from the length, uh, from the length, we are simply talking about the distance from our distance formula, okay? So AC is going to be equal to the 3.41. All right, so AC from our distance formula, remember it's X1 minus X2 squared plus Y1 minus Y2 squared. So this is what you're gonna have on your formula for the distance. So substituting our values, uh, considering AC, we are considering these two points, A and C. So we're just considering the X values. The X here is negative five. The X here is three. So you're adding, you're subtracting, I mean, these X values. So it is going to be X here, three, minus the X on this point C, which is minus five. So it's supposed to be three, Minus, minus five like this. Minus and minus gives us what? A plus. So at the end is three plus five, right? Plus, you do the same on the y values. Y1 minus Y2. So the y value here, it's a nine. The y value here, it's a three. So it's nine minus three. So it's going to be nine minus three 
squared. All right, so this gives us the distance or the length of AC. So for the length, it can be in set form or whatever that you want. Just use your calculator to simplify that. 3 plus 5, so this is 3 plus 5 to the exponent of 2 plus 9 minus 6. This is 9 minus 3, sorry, 9 minus 3 to the power of 2 like that, which is going to give us a 10. So meaning to say we have got uh, 10 units from point A to point C, we have got 10 units in that case. Remember, this is length. You can just write units or you can just write 10, just, just 10 like that. It's fine, okay? Then, um, what was it about this question? 3.42, again, uh, still determining the length. This time, we are talking about the line segment CB, okay? We have to consider the line CB, in this case, from C to B, all right? So let's determine our length in that case of CB. Remember, the point C here is negative 5, uh, 3. This is our B, which is 1, negative 5. All right, so the length of CB, that's 3.42, all right? This is another item, right? So CB, the, uh, the distance, guys, we've already talked about this. Uh, distance formula X1 minus X2, so we're not gonna rewrite again, we just substitute X1. Uh, we are considering CB in this case. So the X value here, it's negative five. The X value here, it's one. So that's minus five, minus one, uh, squared, okay? You move on to the y values, y1 minus y2, all right? So that's y1. The y value here is three. The y value here is minus five. So it's three minus minus five. So that is going to be three minus minus five like that, which, is, which gives us what? Three plus five minus and minus gives us a plus. So that will be three plus five uh, squared. All right, so this gives us the length of C B, not C, D, but C, B, all right? So let us have our length of C, B uh, by substituting. I'm thinking that we've got like same values. As you can see, it's six and eight. It's gonna have the same length there. But anyways, let's see. Uh, negative one, negative five, negative six, negative five, negative one squared like this, plus three plus five squared, three plus five squared. Squared. Okay, like this, this is going to be a 10. So I've got 10 units there. Okay, so like I said there, we've got just save the same thing because these values are the same. 5 and this which is 6, 6 and 8 there. Okay, anyways, it's fine. Uh, that's C beam. That's our C beam, uh, 10 units. Then the last part, they want us to determine or to calculate the area of triangle A, B, C. All right, the area of triangle A, B, C, two marks for that, all right, for this area. Okay, uh, remember triangle A, B, C, we just talked about this previously when we proved that these two are perpendicular A, C, and what, and C, B, they are perpendicular, and we calculated C, B uh, here, we calculated our C, B, which was 10 units, okay? So we have this C, B, which is 10 units. So we can be able to calculate our area because remember we said this is a right angle, this is a right angle triangle because we proved that these two are perpendicular, A, B, A, C, and C, B, they are perpendicular. We proved that and that's why we said here we've got what? A 90 degrees. So we are going to use half base of times the perpendicular height because we have what? A right angle triangle. So the area in that case is going to be simply, all right, the area is going to be half of the base times the perpendicular height. So you can consider this AC as your base, it's up to you. So you can just consider half of AC times the height. You can consider CB or BC, it's up to you, this one. Okay, so that's it. Uh, let us multiply. So this is going to be half of AC from A to C, that is 10 units. We calculated this, we got 10 units times from B to C, which is same as CB, which is 10 units again. So this is half of 10 times 10, uh, which is half of 10 is five, five times 10, which is 50, all right? We can just use the calculator for that. That is one over two multiplied to 10. You also multiply to 10. This is going to give us uh, 50. So this is area which is measured in 
square units, all right? So area, is if it is meters, it's square meters. If it is millimeters, it's square millimeters. If it is centimeters, square centimeters. Here, you just write square units because you do not know, is it going to be centimeters? Was it set, was it meters or what is this? This is just a Cartesian plan. So on a Cartesian plan, you work with units. Okay, so that was the question on our analytical geometry. As you can see, it's a fair question that we had. Uh, it just needs us to revise as much question papers as we can and also try to work with the introduction of the topic, understand the formulas that are required in your syllabus and try to work with the formulas as you understand each and every formula from the area, talk about the midpoints, uh, talk about uh, the gradient and so forth with all those things. And also uh, the analytical geometry, as I always say, it works hand in hand with the Euclidean geometry. So you're going to see that it works hand in hand. So it needs you to also know your theorems from your Euclidean geometry so that you can be able to attempt uh, any question that can be related to the Euclidean geometry, while it is under analytical geometry. Uh, you just need to understand that.